So this is going to be a demonstration of the make utility. Before we move on to understand make, let us first understand some things about compiling C programs. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write a small C program first. So here I'll write a main.c and uh, some main function. And let us say the main function is going to call function f. And uh, here I have int a, b, and c. Uh, let's ignore the values of a and b. Fine. And let us enter the return c. So that is the main. And I'm going to write in a separate file called f.c the function f. And I'm going to say this return c plus y. Okay. So close. I have two files now. Main.c is calling the function f and f.c has the function f. I hope all of you know how to compile this program, which is actually split into two files. Uh, just to make it more interesting, what I'll do, I'll also say here z and z is equal to g of x, y and x plus y plus z, let us say here. And let me write a g.c where I have an int g, let's take a p and q, and let us say g simply does uh, return p minus q, fine. Now the same program is split into, uh, the program is actually split into three files. To compile and run this, this is what you normally do, cc main.c minus c, minus c normally comes first compile it partially then cc minus cf dot c and cc minus c g dot c now you'll see that is this warning in both of this because the prototype of f and g are not given isn't it so the correct method of doing this is declare the prototype so here i can go to main and here i declare int f int int and the warning will go away the normal Standardized method is not to declare it here, but to hash include here a file, uh, let us say proto.h and open a new file called proto.h and write it here. Same with g. So this file has all the prototypes of the functions and in f.c also because I am calling g, I hash include proto.h. Fine. So that is the normal way. Now I have four files. Okay. F.c, g.c, main.c and proto.h. And the code is split across four files. Proto.h is hash included in main.c and f.c. But not in g.c. If I compile now cc main.c, no warning. Compile now f.c, no warning. Oh, sorry, minus c. cc minus c. And then finally, I link them together cc main.o, f.o, g.o, minus o try. And the try program runs. So actually, here I did not uh, write any values for a and b. So, and there's no printing happening here. So maybe I can print this c and return 0 here. And let me say equal to 10. So that you know, I know some predictable values rather than random values. Fine. So now my question is, okay, and you can write it in the chat. I want to recompile my try because I changed my code. Which command should I run to recompile try? I want all of you to write in the chat. What do you think are the commands I should be running now in order to recompile this executable file try? Can you write quickly in the chat? Let me see what you are replying in the chat. I'll repeat, I want to recompile the executable try. So what should I do? How do I recompile it? Which command should I run in order to recompile? I think most commands are already in front of you. So you should be able to tell me quickly, uh, which all command should I run in order to compile the final file called try. I'm assuming you have learned this partial compilation and 
then compile you know linking of the main dot o files in your data structures course so cc minus c main dot c and then main dot o g dot o f dot o fine so whatever answers have come through are correct and uh, that's fine so all i have to do i have to only compile main dot c fine i don't have to run this command this is not needed at all neither is this needed because these files did not change and that is why the f dot to and g dot to also did not change so i don't have to touch them again all i did is i recompiled this and i have to now link so as you know this is a linking command what it does is it combines the machine code that is there in these three files together and basically it links the call to the function to the actual code of the function and that is how you get a complete executable and that is try so now if i run try some output uh, which should be correct <laughs> uh, so uh, that's how you compile and link and run programs just to give you the basics once again this is called partial compilation because the final result of this command uh, main dot o is not a complete executable it's a partially compiled what it lacks is the code of f okay the function f when i did this command i actually did something called as linking and i said link the machine code because the arguments here are machine code files so i said link the code in main dot o with the code in this and with the code in this so basically in linking what happens the call of a function is connected with the actual code of the function that is what happens now suppose i keep changing f and then g and then main and so on and then i have to compile again and again because that is what happens in normal development then i have to keep remembering that which all files i have changed and then which commands are to be run and so on so that is a botheration now i want to automate the whole process for that a tool like make is used so what does the command like make do uh command like make will automate the compilation process using information that i provide in a file called make file so i will open a file called make file with a capital m and now i will write here information instructions so that make can automate the process so what is what does a make file contain essentially it contains information like this a target the target is the file try okay now which all files does does the try depend on so i'll say it depends on main dot o f dot o and g dot o okay so this is a dependency information that if any one of these three changes then the try should be recompiled how should i recompile on new line a tab and this is how i should recompile so this is the instruction telling here that the target name is try and if any one of these three file changes then this command should be run now this is not sufficient isn't it because all i said is if one of the object code file changes but then how should object code file change so main dot o it depends on which file it depends on main dot c and not only that it also depends on proto dot h because if proto dot h changes then main dot o has to be recompiled because it is hash included how should it be recompiled using this command similarly f dot o has to be recompiled if one of the two changes but compile like using this command and g dot o depends only on g dot c because there is no hash include of that in g dot c so what i need to do is run this command so now what i have done okay i'll repeat now for each possible file you know that is created during the process i have specified which all files does it depend on so what will make do make will actually look at the time stamp on each file and check when did it change so make will come to know that uh, let us say proto dot h has changed then it will look up in this whole information file that okay on proto dot h these two depend f dot o and main dot o so what it will do it will run these two commands and finally obtain the main dot o f dot o target 
and then it will know that min dot to here and f dot to has changed. So obviously this action has to be taken once again. So it will run this command also and finally compile the try. So let me tell you now the syntax here goes something like this: target colon list of dependencies tab commands to be run commands to be run. So then there is no need to say only one command here. You could also say echo high. You know whatever command you know that you think is is necessary. You could say echo back. So you could add more commands. Okay, depending on what you think is needed, you could add more commands as well. But uh, what is make? What is make doing? Okay, it reads the make file. It creates a dependency tree now. You will observe that uh, the information I have given here is a tree. That try depends on main dot f dot o g dot o. Main dot o depends on main dot c proto dot h. F dot o depends on f dot c proto dot h. So it's a tree. Uh, you know more like a, 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 so. Uh, a, a, a more like an n-ary tree because the number of dependencies can be n. So it creates a dependency tree, and what it does is it checks the timestamp on each file specified as a dependency, and uh, whenever a file changes, it invokes all actions corresponding to that. Dependent file. Interestingly, it does it recursively or iteratively. Iteratively for all files that keep changing. So what I said is like suppose I change proto dot h, then it will invoke these two actions and these two actions. But as a result of that, f dot o and min dot o get created, so their timestamp has changed. So it will figure out that this dependency has changed, so it will invoke this action also. All right, so this is what make does. Now I'll delete whatever I wrote here because that is not part of my make file. So this is my make file. Now I just run make, and you will notice that it recompiled try. So I really don't know why it recompiled try. Let me check. That must be because I had recompiled main dot c. So it only recompiled try. Let me open proto dot h. And let me add a new line here. That's it. Just to you know, make a change. And now let me run make. You will notice that it is running these two commands related to main dot o. These two commands related to uh, f dot o, and the final command. Uh, what I'll do is I'll simply remove this because they are unnecessary. They were there only to demonstrate that you can have multiple commands. Now, if I run make, make it doesn't do anything. It says everything is up to date. No need to do anything. Let me just say touch. What does touch do? Touch will change the timestamp. Without changing the content, only the timestamp will change. So now you see that again, it is running the three commands. Let me touch g dot c, g dot c only, and it will run only two commands. I can observe. Fine. So this is how make works. Any questions on this so far? I'm waiting for your questions on whatever I have demonstrated. Let me get to make file. I'll wait for a few minutes before your questions come. All right. So I'm assuming there are no questions. So I'll just demonstrate few more features. So this is what I demonstrated the most essential job of job of make. All right. And uh, what you could do further is you know do something like this that you could declare a variable cc equal to gcc or you know like you could say user bin gcc. So this variable is declared to this particular value, and in this code you could write dollar cc. I think like this, yeah. 
and here you could write dollar cc and here you could write dollar cc okay so it will invoke the user bin gcc rather than the cc so up to date let us touch main.c and call make so you'll see that it is calling user bin gcc command rather than the cc command which actually happened to be same because it's all a soft link in on ubuntu but uh, yeah, so that is the use of a variable okay then when let us go to now the make file of xv6 so this is the make file of xv6 now you will notice that all it that is being done here is a variable is being declared to lot of values okay list of variables here so list of file names here so obj is all these files then tool prefix is not used and so on so i'll ignore this part if not they fall apart and uh, this part also you see here that a variable cc is defined to be gcc with the tool prefix now what is this tool prefix uh, the tool prefix uh, is some prefix depending on the operating system so let's ignore that so some commands are being you know you will see defined the c flag variable is initialized with lot of values then you can add more to it you know like with some shell command you can run the shell command here and add more values to it and the as flags variable so lot of variables are defined here as you can see and now you will understand this that the target xv6.img you know the actions for this should be invoked if any one of these two file changes and which all command should run these three command should run whenever one of these two files changes now you will see boot block is again here so when should boot block be uh, the actions for boot block be invoked whenever one of these two file changes and how what action should run all these actions should run whenever the one of the two files changes so this is the kind of nature of entries in this particular file uh let me make one more point now essentially what we have in this file is a tree with the try at the top but i just want to you know make it a point that here i could also say something and uh, it depends on main dot c and all i do is just say echo hi here so make is a very general purpose tool okay so don't confuse that this try has to match this try this is just a name a placeholder name in order to indicate you know a target action this is the dependency so what make does is it starts with this file if this file has changed all it does it takes this action it has nothing to do with you know whether this word is related to the word here so as you can see here all i'm saying echo hi so all it will do is whenever main dot c changes it will do echo hi that's all it will do you will see that in this particular file i have two trees now because this something is not a part of the tree of the try isn't it this is a separate tree so i can have multiple trees with different roots so there can be many such trees so for example now i could say make something okay something and it says echo hi and it always keeps saying echo hi fine so because the something doesn't exist so that each action will always be invoked because there is nothing called something the action is always in invoked so uh, that's why it will work the make in the make file of uh, xv6 you will see now xv6.img is the root and then these are two internal nodes of the dependency tree and then here is boot block and these two are further branches from the boot block let us look at the kernel this is the kernel now you can see what does this dollar obj is mean it is basically going to copy paste the variable obj here so all the dot to files and apart from that these files so what does it mean whenever one of these file changes then take the action specified here what actions will be taken this is a ld command which is basically going to invoke the program called linker and the linker is going to do something and then it will call the obj dump command uh, we will see the commands later and the other obj dump command so all these three actions will be invoked whenever the particular target you know uh, is supposed to be uh, recompiled 
So that's how MIC works. Uh, any questions on MIC? Alright, fine. So I want all of you now to try XV6 and if there are any problems, let me know.